There's a zoo in Boise, Bronco Stadium in Boise. There's potatoes in Boise and buckaroos in Boise. There's lots to do in Boise, lots to see in Boise. But there is no Z in Boise. Say it with me. Because there is no Z in Boise. The best of the rest. Teams who don't belong to a BCS conference, but you can't ignore them because they could crash the BCS party just like TCU did last season. We'll talk about those Horned Frogs as well as BYU and, yes, Boise State as well. But first, let's lead up the show by talking about Notre Dame. You know, after they lost to Tulsa in mid-October last season, some thought that the Irish might even miss out on the bowl game. They were 4-5 and five at the time. And then what happened? Notre Dame got hot, red hot. In fact, they blew out Utah, beat Army, won at USC for the first time in a long time, and they dominated Miami in the Sun Bowl. They finished 8-5, and five, not bad for Brian Kelly, his first year as head coach for the Irish. Notre Dame, even more optimism. Eight starters are back on both sides of the ball. Question as far as QB, who's going to play, or will they go with two quarterbacks? Dane Crist played most of the games last season, but was only 4-5. and five. Tommy Reese played the last four games for the Irish, won all of them. So they could go with Reese, they could go with Chris, or they could play a two-quarterback system. We'll find out in that opener against South Florida. Sierra Wood will uh, lead the Irish's running attack, but this is not an area that fires me up. Um, they were not terrific on the ground at all last season. They were good, though, as far as receiving core. Michael Floyd, who's inching closer and closer to being Notre Dame's all-time career receiving leader, he is back. He just has to keep his conduct off the field. Um, at an even level, um, he's had issues with driving under the influence of alcohol more than once. So we'll see if Floyd, um, whom last time I heard was suspended for this, we'll see if his suspension is uplifted before the season opener. So uh, check back with us, please, on this webpage for that information. We'll put an annotation up there as soon as I find out something. Most of the offensive line for Notre Dame is back as well. So Notre Dame's offense, if they can get the ground game figured out, um, they'll be better. Defense should be good. Eight starters are back on the defensive side, including the safety. Harrison Smith led the team last season with seven picks. And a guy who could be All-American at linebacker had 133 tackles last season. That's Manti Teo. He will put a lick on you. Very impressive player. He's back. But Notre Dame has to get better as far as defending the run. They were exposed in that area big time against Stanford, against Navy, and against Michigan. The kicker returns, David uh, Ruffer, last season missed just one kick, and they'll need him. The Irish' schedule, 9 of their 12 opponents went to bowl games a year ago, and if USC wasn't on probation, Notre Dame would be facing 10 bowl teams. September could be rough, hosting South Florida, going to Michigan, hosting Michigan State, and going to Pittsburgh. If Notre Dame gets out 3-1 or even 4-0 at that point, you may start thinking about a BCS bid. Remember, Notre Dame needs to finish in the top eight in the final BCS standings to get the automatic bid, but they could still get consideration for a bid if they win at least nine games and finish in the final 14 in the BCS standings. So watch for that, especially at the end of the season to see if Notre Dame has a shot qualifying. I think they'll win eight or nine games, but I don't think they'll have enough to uh, qualify for a BCS bid. Looking at BYU, they're a new independent, formerly in the Mountain West Conference, trying to get more national exposure, and they feel this is one way they can do that. doesn't hurt when you have 10 starters back for the Cougars. Remember, BYU last season started pretty slow, ended up winning the majority of their games during the second half of the season, barely qualified for a bowl game, but won their bowl game to finish at 7-6. They expect more things this year because of the amount of experience back for the Cougars. Uh, Jake Heaps is a... Um, had modest statistics last season for the Cougars. He returns um, along with very talented offensive lineman Matt Reynolds. The defense only returns five players. It's a team that's uh, good against the run but has issues um, against the pass. And uh, defensive tackle Rodney Fuga, one of those five starters back for BYU. Their schedule in September, a couple of interesting road games at Ole Miss and what should be a shootout. Could be a shootout at Texas as well. They do host Utah later on in the month. A couple of other games to really watch for against TCU in Arlington and at Oregon State. I think 
Most of those road games are going to be tall orders for BYU unless their defense is much better. If so, a 9 or 10 win season is possible. I actually have them going 8-4 and four this year. The TCU Horned Frogs, all they've done the last two seasons is go unbeaten during the regular season. In fact, last year they had the perfect season overall. 13-0, number two in the country, and Rose Bowl champs as they beat Wisconsin. It's going to be tough this year for the Horned Frogs and Gary Patterson to have another unbeaten year. Biggest reasons why, number one, Andy Dalton, the quarterback, finally ran out of eligibility. So now enter Casey Paha to fill in some big shoes. He did play a little bit last year, but that was during mock time when TCU was winning really big. And Paha, because the lead was so big, didn't get a chance to show off his arm. He threw very um, seldom last season for the Horned Frog. So uh, Paha, pressure will be on him. Ed Wesley, though, should take a little pressure off Wesley, a terrific running back. Um, he returns, and we'll see how TCU does up front. Only one offensive lineman is back. Defensively, I've got some work to do up front as well. TCU, remember last year, number one defense in the country in points allowed and in yardage allowed. Um, six starters return on the defensive side, but they got to replace um, a couple of defensive linemen, um, and that will include... Um, losing Dwayne Daniels, but they at least return a terrific uh, defensive end in Stanley Maponga. And that's the one thing TCU has done over the years. They've continued to um, plug in terrific defensive linemen, terrific defensive ends. So don't be surprised if the Horned Frogs remain tough to run the ball against. I find it hard to believe that they're going to be as good as last year's defense. That's a tall order. And um, as far as the schedule for TCU, they're going to be tested early, playing at Baylor and at Air Force, two teams that could really run the ball. So if TCU has deficiencies in that front seven, really watch out. And by the way, let's give props also to TCU's linebackers, um, Tanner Brock and uh, potential All-American Tank Carter, uh, two terrific linebackers. They are back for TCU, so that will help. But I still think the pressure is going to be on that defensive line to contain Robert Griffin at Baylor, as well as that triple option threat of the Falcons. They return their quarterback and leading um, running back. If TCU can take care of business, it can handle BYU at home later in the year. And by the way, that BYU is going to be a home slanted game. It's in Arlington. Then all eyes will be on that November game on the Blue Smurf Field at Boise State. I've got TCU actually finishing 10-2 this season. They'll be good, very good, but it's not going to be like the TCU team of last year. And that leads us to Boise State. Oh, yeah, the Broncos. On the national scene, whether you like it or dislike it, they're not going anywhere. That's because they have a lot of offensive weapons back. Granted, they lost their top two receivers, but most of the offensive line returns. Doug Martin, 1,000-yard runner from a year ago, is back for Boise. And, by the way, the uh, QB is back. You might have heard of him, Kellen Moore. <laughs> Moore, what a career he's had. 99 touchdowns, throwing, and just 19 picks. He will become college football's all-time winningest QB, barring injury, before the season is over. You know you are pretty special when you're considered the best player in the program's history and you still have one year of eligibility to go. Again, welcome to the world of Kellen Moore. Biggest question besides the receivers for Boise, how will the offense function now that Brian Harson, their offensive coordinator, is now at Texas? Brett Peace has huge shoes to fill. Peace was the uh, receiving coach now will be the play caller for Boise. Defensively, last year the Broncos were better than you might realize. When some people think of Boise State football, they immediately think of Kellen Moore and the passing attack in the running game. But last season, um, Boise was uh, very good at getting to the quarterback. Last season, in fact, they led all FBS schools in sacks. Um, as far as this season goes, we'll see how they do. They lose a valuable player, though, in uh, Ryan Winterswick but do return uh, Shea McClellan from the defensive end. McClellan um, last season had nine sacks, so even more is expected from him. The linebacking core is good, but they do lose um, three defensive backs who saw valuable playing time from a year ago. And they'll have to be good this season because that opener is against Georgia, a game we'll talk about in a second, against a pretty good quarterback in um, Aaron Murray. If you're looking at Boise State's schedule as uh, Boise is playing in the Mountain West Conference for the first time, they get their toughest games at home. Air Force and TCU both have to come to the Blue Smurf Field, and nobody wins in Boise. So, gotta like the Broncos' chances there. 
out of league. They host Nevada, the only team that beat them a year ago, but Nevada's without Colin Kaepernick. He's um, finally moved on. They're a fantastic quarterback for the Wolfpack. All eyes will be on that season opener in Atlanta against an improved Georgia team. If Boise takes care of business, in my opinion, they go undefeated. I don't think they'll make it to the national championship game because I think there will be at least two BCS conference champions who will go unbeaten. They'll get the benefit of the doubt over Boise. So for the Broncos, I look for it to be another terrific season. That offense, even though Harson's not there calling plays, there's too much experience for them to miss a beat. So Boise to win the Mountain West and to get to 12-0, but it won't be enough to uh, make it to the national championship game because of the way the BCS is structured. That does it for my look at the best of the rest of the BCS Busters. 